So I work in the Midham Hospital uh, on both departments. Uh, these are the machines I used uh, last year. Uh, this is my old machine. It's already broken down, and this is uh, the newest on the intensive care. And this is one of the machines. It's, it's uh, in the emergency department uh, uh, always. Why ultrasound? Uh, just a, a patient from a week ago, uh, old female, comes in with vomiting for a number of days in shock, uh, very strained ECG, and the lab comes in, acute renal failure, uh, high level of troponines, and, and the doctor on call calls the cardiologist, and the cardiologist demands the patients to the angiography. Um, but just pass by and say, well, this was the... This was a ch oh, okay. Going. This was a chest X-ray, and well, I said, wait a minute. This patient, this sick, we're not just sending it, the patient to the cardiologist. Uh, put the ultrasound in, and this is not typical for the fast echo, uh, but a uh, very dilated intestinal, f um, and a very sorry. very dilated stomach. So we put in a drain it, came out one and a half liters of, uh, of stomach fluid. If you send this patient to the cardiologist, uh, she probably dies on the cardiologist, uh, on the scanning uh, machine. We put a C did a CT scan, didn't show very much, uh, but the CT scan sh showed a severe pneumonia and we just put it on the intensive care and not to the cardiologist. Uh, so it changed decisions. Uh, the abdominal ultrasounds, what are the main indications? It's, it's trauma, shock, general diagnostic. Uh, I'm an internal medicine specialist also, and pregnancy, but pregnancy is, is not for today. And on the abdominal ultrasound, you can see a lot of things. Uh, we not, do not have the time to discuss all these things. Uh, so you can see something about liver, gallbladder, gall ducts, kidney, spleen, the aortic uh, problems, the IVC, the diaphragm. Uh, bladder, pancreas, bowel, stomach. It's a bit too much to put in a half an hour. So I'm going to talk about fast ultrasound, the, a little bit about rush and some internal medicine stuff. Um, we start with fast, and fast means you crash. Um, so typical belly sign, um, patient with severe abdominal pain. And you, know, you have the, all this, also this kind of patients, and you never put the knife clearly in the thorax or in the abdomen, so you need to, to scan both parts. It's, it's a difficult thing sometimes. And when you, I have to also talk about this a little bit. It's the theoretical thing. When you all have these difficult names, the different planes. You have to study it. And people use a lot of names for for all these uh, different planes, just learn it. Fast, it's, uh, what, what do we talk about in fast is we're going to scan um, in the five um, regions and just going over them. And these are the locations what you're going to look. It's the aortic region and the cardiac region. Uh, we're going to look to the liver and the lungs that part, we're going to look to the spleen, kidney, and the lungs over here. Uh, we're going to look at the Douglas space and also kidney regions. Why looking at the, those places? It's for patients in shock, and free intraperitoneal fluid locates uh, preferably in this region, in this region, and in this region. So we start with the right upper quadrant view, um, and we put the probe anterior of the axillary line, uh, use the liver as an acoustic window, and mainly concentrate on three areas. It's the first is the infradiaphragmatic space, uh, second is the Morrison pouch of the hepatorenal space, and we also it's, it's a uh, very important one, the caudal liver tip because when you have minor bleeding, it will only show up over here. 
This is. This is a scan of the, the liver. Um, you're going to see the diaphragm over here, and this is the lower pole of the kidney. Uh, in movement, you see the kidney over here, and this is the liver over here, and this is the diaphragm. This is a normal view. And when you scan the, the caudal tip of the liver, uh, you will see Sorry. You will see the kidney upper pole over here. It's not very, it's not very clear. On the hands-on, it will become a little bit more clear. Um, and this is the caudal tip of the liver. When you have free fluid, it mostly starts up here. Then this is the, the, the third part we have to look at is the infradiaphragmatic space. It's the relation between the lung and the liver. It's where you can find the pleural fluid. You see the lung moving. It's in the lung ultrasound. You will also see this sign, the recognition of the pleural line that's moving. It's the liver that's moving with respiration, and it's the IVC. But this part of the IVC we're not going to use for measurements. Some uh, pathological views now. Um, so is this the free fluid we're going to look for and uh, the kidney-liver uh, relation. So we see the liver again, uh, with uh, probably here is, is, is the kidney. Um, and over here we will see some uh, free fluid and a small um, echo sign here. It's, it's, it's a typical fibrin clot, uh, typical for having blood. Another view, the kidney comes over here. Uh, it's the liver, and it's the upper pole of the kidney where you can see the, the free fluid and with some clots floating in. Uh, this one is a nice video, and it's also good um, uh, online. Uh, website is on YouTube, and you uh, type in Sonocyte, you'll find a lot of a very good um, teaching movies. Uh, it's a step wound to the epigastrium, and we see a fine liver laceration. Uh, you see the damage in the liver, so you do not need a CT scan for this, and you see the free fluid. Again here, the kidney and the liver. Uh, again, a view of the caudal tip of the liver with some free fluid and the kidney over here. The last um, scans, uh, you, you, when you look to the free fluid, it was very black uh, on the ultrasound. It's not always that. Uh, if you have a lot of blood or clotted blood, the appearances of the free fluid becomes very different, uh, and it almost looks like normal tissue. Uh, but it's, it's hyper-dense uh, with a lot of spots in. Um, this is not on the right upper quadrant. It's just... Uh, somewhere below uh, in the, you see a lot of intestines, uh, but typical aspect of hyperechogenic blood and free fluid. Uh, once you've seen this, you will remember it, how it looks. The next part we came to look at is the aorta. Uh, the bedside detection of abdominal aortic aneurysma is very crucial in the emergency mis uh, medicine. Um, and Abdominal aorta aneurysm detection is an important application of bedside uh, ultrasonography. So it allows rapid diagnosis and treatment of unstable patients with rupture aorta aneurysms, uh, without CT, of course. For the aorta, you have um, two views. The first position is a short axis view, an epigastric region uh, aimed posterior to the spine, and the second position you can use as a short axis view above the umbilicus. Uh, the basic aortic anatomy, um, go not into detail. It's important you recognize the spine. Uh, my CT images, uh, my echo images are not that good that you can see the um, spine on the screen, but on the hands-on, we're going to see it very well. 
This is the IVC and this is the aorta. Uh -huh. Especially in young patients, uh, you see the aorta movement uh, with the cardiac. Um, you can see the aorta on the long axis uh, with the topical systole diastole movement of the aorta. Um, going to skip these ones, but this is the basic stuff of the aorta and the IVC the position uh, against the spine. Uh, so the aorta is right-sided, left-sided is the IVC. You have typical, you have three major types of aorta aneurysms. Uh, the fusiforms uh, above the renal veins or uh, um, underneath the renal veins uh, extending to one of the uh, iliac arteries or the secular aneurysms. What's important for when you scan uh, the aorta and having an aneurysm is that you have the diameter uh, right. Um, so you can think this is the diameter, eh? but what you, hear, what you see here is a lot of thrombi, uh, and that's when you have to measure it you have to measure also the thrombi. And so do not measure this part, then you have not an aneurysm probably. If you measure it right, uh, it's above, it's eight centimeters, a very big aneurysm. You see the spontaneous floating uh, of contrast formation of blood that flows very slow. So it, you will see it on the ultrasound. This is another view with uh, a thrombus uh, only on the left side, uh, slow flowing blood uh, and very big aneurysm. When you have the long axis view, uh, uh, very slow blood, um, not a very good image, but this is a lot of thrombi and you have to measure the diameter right from this point to that point. This is an example of a secular aneurysm. Um, this is the aorta on the long axis view, and you have a small secular aneurysm over here. Then we go to the left upper quadrant. Um, it's to look at the spleen and, and kidney. Uh, the probe is placed very posteriorly, and you can say knuckles to the stretcher. It means your hand has to be on the stretcher and the, the probe also. Uh, it is the, mo the more difficult uh, region to scan, uh, especially in the intensive care patients and the emergency patients, because they mostly cannot rotate to see the kidney very well. We concentrate on two areas, the infradiaphragmatic space again, to look to the relation of kidney, spleen, and lung, and to the spleno-renal space. This is an example of a normal uh, ultrasound. This is the spleen, and here you see the whole kidney, and there is no fluid, there's only interperitoneal fat between. Here we see the infradiaphragmatic space. Again, the plural line. It's an important marker to see. If you see this normal image of a normal plural line together with the spleen, then you know there's no plural fluid in that deep space. It's an important message always for a very sick patients to know is there plural fluid or not. This is a pathological view. Again, you see the spleen the kidney and there's a lot of dark space, uh, free fluids around the spleen. It's mostly above the spleen and not in between kidney and spleen. Uh, so when you look to free fluid, look uh, above the, the spleen and uh, you find more free fluid than between spleen and kidney. Um, sometimes uh, in trauma you can also see a rupture of the spleen. I don't have any image of it. Um, I'm sorry. Another example of, um, well, this is not a movie, uh, of 
kidney, spleen, and some black space around the spleen with free fluids. Here you see again the kidney and the spleen um, with some free fluid, and here is, uh, I think, uh, is some. Um, couldn't make it up on the image. It, it, because did not do the scan myself. It can be the diaphragm with some free fluid also in the um, uh, pleural space, or it can be a, a big thrombi. Again, an image of free fluid uh, above the spleen again. Uh, uh, some free fluid between spleen and kidney, and a lot of free fluid above the diaphragm also. Uh, so this is the diaphragm, and there is some thoracic free fluid also present. Uh, that's the important of that reason. You, you see free fluid intra-abdominal, and you can see free fluid in the thorax. Then the suprapubic fast view. Uh, uh, some basic anatomy. Uh, it's called cool the sac in, in women uh, or in the Douglas space, or you can use both terms uh, in men. And you have to look behind the uterus in women, and you have to look behind the bladder in uh, men. Okay, you have to examine it in two planes, um, the short axis view and then the long axis view. Uh, sometimes the long axis view gives better view on the Douglas space than on the short axis view. And on hands-on, it will become very clear. Um, this is the basic bladder view. Uh, um, this is also very useful in patients to the emergency department. A lot of pain in, in the abdomen and with uh, a globus. It is a very stupid thing on the, end, in the emergency department. It's what you see it a lot. Putting the scan on it, it and you have the diagnosis. It's very easy. Uh, With this kind of bladder, uh, you probably have uh, a globus. The free fluid um, investigation is sometimes difficult for a man. Uh, you have sometimes two dark spots that are the seminal vesicles. That's not free fluid. It's a basic view in women, uh, the bladder, the uterus, and the very deep uh, space, the pelvic cul-de-sac in women, at, at the normal view. Now we have some pathological views. Uh, with here the uterus again and some free fluid and, and the bladder. Uh, now we see a dark uh, spot between bladder and uterus uh, being the free fluid and some free fluid underneath the uterus. This is um, also a short axis scan in a man uh, with some free fluid uh, behind the bladder. Uh, uh, but it's, it can be difficult to differentiate between the seminal vesicles. Uh, that's why it's sometimes f more easy to do the long axis. Uh, then you don't have the problem of the seminal vesicles uh, to see the free fluid. So again, you see the bladder and the free fluid behind the bladder. Um, I put this scan on to see also some bowel movements in, in the Douglas space, uh, and that's not free fluid. Uh, but the bowel movement um, shows you very well that you have the deep space intra-abdominal and that you're looking uh, on the right spot. Also, this will become very clear in the hands-on. Uh, probably we see some bowel movements with the, the students that are over there. Uh, this is the bowel movement. This is the bladder. This was the, the patients we saw. Eh? Uh, uh, the image, um, and he had some, I uh, didn't take any videos from it because he was very ill and he needed to go directly to the, uh, to the uh, operation room. Had a lot of free fluid, uh, you can see gut signs, just the, you can see the uh, typical 
science of how um, a gut looks like with some massive free fluid and being blood around it. And here you see the, the bladder and with some free fluids behind the bladder. And this was, I think, the only uh, film I took and a lot of free fluid behind the bladder in the, in the suprapubic long axis view. We can also look to the heart and the IVC. But here I put it a little bit in on the rush concept. Uh, put this online, uh, look for the uh, article of Pereira, the rush exam, rapid ultrasound in shock in the evaluation of critical care. Um, they made a very basic concept of how to look to shocked patients. And they divide um, things in pump, tanks, and pipes. And then you can, with the different types of shock, sorry, you can uh, look to the heart, to all the tanks, the IVC, and to all the vessels. And you can make a pretty good diagnosis of what is going on uh, urgently. Some examples. <coughs> First, the IVC. Well, uh, why it's important the IVC? It, it's a major venous return system. It's thin walled with high compliance. And it's change in diameter reflect changes in pressure. And that, that might, makes it very important. Some basic IVC physiology is more complex than this, but uh, in spontaneous breathing, the IVC uh, moves its diameter. On positive pressure ventilation, it changes, of course. Uh, but even in hypovolemic patients, you, have, you can have the opposite effect as in spontaneous breathing patients. Here we are looking at the rate atrium of the heart, and here we see the IVC. Um, that's moving with um, respiration. Um, also that on the hands-on is more easy to see than on a very short uh, video. Uh, this is uh, also the IVC and this is the um, other hepatic veins. Uh, dilated IVC with not a lot of movement during uh, inspiration and some pleural fluid over here. Basic view, looking at the, the four-chamber view of the heart, right ventricle, left ventricle, uh, left atrium, right atrium. Uh, and you don't need to be a cardiologist to look at the right atrium is somewhat dilated, but that the right ventricle and left ventricle are working normally. And sometimes I have this surprising diagnosis. A patient was very bad in shock. And you do your ultrasound and you see this. And you don't need to be a cardiologist to make a diagnosis. There's a lot of pericardial fluid. And, and you know where the problem is. And you can do something about it. Some basic internal medicine thing. Huh? With people with free fluid, it's not always bleeding. It can be ascites. And then you can see a very small dotted liver. Uh, it's, it's a cirrhotic liver. And they typically have ascites. And you see ascites everywhere, and typical view of the small intestine. It's just dancing in the free fluid. People with right-sided upper abdominal pain, uh, that's something, if you have an ultrasound machine, just learn it. If you have a patient with gallbladder stones, look at it uh, to, to see the stones. And you have to then try to measure how the gallbladder wall, how thick it is. One tip, when you look at the gallbladder, oh, some, can you put it back on? Never measure the gallbladder wall on the lower part, eh? always at the upper part, eh? because that's the correct one here. This part gives uh, a lot of uh, problems uh, to measure. Um, and sometimes you see from this different uh, surprising things, a very sick patient who had high fever and a very big liver abscedation. Uh, this is, these are things you can see very simply uh, on the ultrasound. And if you don't know what it is, well, you can send the patient to the radiologist or the CT scan. But at least on the emergency department, you pick it up. So. Um, Later in the afternoon, I have another session what you can do with ultrasound in the whole uh, um, 
part of the intensive care and, ultra and the emergency department. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions.